If you've been playing racing games on consoles with a controller and you're starting to think about getting a steering wheel, this video is for you. I'm a real life racing driver, but I've done the same. I started playing Gran Turismo on a controller when I was a kid, then I started getting more and more and more competitive and addicted until I finally heard of the existence of steering wheels that you could use to play these games. And this totally changed my life. In this video, you will find out if, when and why you might want to transition from a controller to a steering wheel. First of all, let's make something very clear here. There are two big spectrums of racing realism. On one side, we have arcade racing games, which are not focused on replicating the physics of real racing. On the other side, you have racing simulators, where the objective is to be the closest possible to how real race cars behave in real life. In the middle of the spectrum, you have Simcades, which are games that do some effort to try to replicate the handling of real cars, but still have that gamified experience and quests that you probably won't find in racing simulators, and also won't be as realistic and attentive to detail. If you're playing on a controller, you are most likely moving from the gaming side of the spectrum towards the sim racing side of the spectrum. And let me warn you about one thing. There's no way back. As soon as you start moving towards more realism and immersion, less realistic games just won't be as fun anymore. There's an aspect of challenge, of physics, of precision, of competitiveness that starts pushing the bar in a way that gets you hooked. Also, moving to a steering wheel is one big necessary step if you ever dream about racing in real life. When I first bought my steering wheel, I was moving from Gran Turismo to Assetto Corsa. Assetto Corsa is already considered a simulator, a lot more to the right of the spectrum than Gran Turismo or Forza, for example. Since this transition, I've moved to iRacing, I've become Canadian Sim Racing Champion, and now I have way over 10,000 hours of driving with steering wheels and pedals and I have never come back to a controller. Now, what's the difference? First of all, if I ask you to steer two degrees to the right on a controller, you will probably just laugh or cry. But that's the kind of precision that we need when we start getting serious and competitive in sim racing. When I bought my first Logitech steering wheel, I was just mesmerized with the amount of possibilities of car handling. I started learning about steering input speeds, about U-shaped lines, V-shaped lines, and obviously I started getting way faster compared to when I was just messing around with a controller. Precision is what you get when you start driving with a steering wheel. Second, you also get pedals. So that means you start controlling your inputs at a whole new level of precision. And you will finally realize how much more control of your car you have, especially when you learn how to trail brake. Yeah, sure, it will take some time. The learning curve is a little bit steeper at first, and it's kind of frustrating, especially if you're driving in racing simulators with assists. But as soon as you break this barrier, you feel like you're an actual racing driver. You feel like you could probably do that in real life. But if there's one thing that I can say is the reason for you to move from a controller to a steering wheel, it is what we call the force feedback. And it's amazing. Here's how it works. In real life, when you turn the car, the front tires fight against the road. Those self-centering forces try to pull the steering back to straight, and you can feel that force on your steering. The higher the force, the stronger the resistance you can feel on the steering. Steering wheels with force feedback replicate that force very precisely, so you can feel not only a presence of a resistance, but the constantly changing amounts of that feedback. So you can tell if there is more grip or less grip on the front tires just by how stronger the steering pulls back against you. And this is what takes you to the very next step of your driving technique. And when you start learning the most about car handling. The force feedback is your way to communicate with the car and the level of immersion just goes through the roof. There are many different steering wheels with different levels of force feedback. They're measured generally in newton meter. The Logitech T920 has a little bit over 2 newton meter, for example, while the Logitech G Pro has 11 newton meters of force feedback, which is already pretty heavy if you're not used to it. When it comes to pedals, there are two most popular ways they work. Entry-level pedals have potentiometers in it, which measure the travel of the pedal. That means how much the pedal is moving. When it reaches the bottom, you're breaking 100%. More advanced pedals have load cells in it, which measure not how much the pedals are moving, but how much force is being applied to them. 
Load cells are crazy because even if they're not moving, they will measure how hard you're pressing. Even if there's absolutely no movement at all in your pedal, it will measure your force very precisely. We can be a million times more precise with load cells because our muscles work much more precisely when it comes to how much you contract your muscles instead of how much you're moving your foot back and forth. You don't really have to look to the pedal meter to know that you're pressing 50 kilos of force because you can feel it. Initially, you won't have to worry too much about how advanced your equipment is. When I first started my sim racing career, I used the Logitech T29, their entry level equipment for over four years. And I started coaching drivers while I was still using it. And the drivers I was coaching had all the equipment you can imagine. Load cells, strong force feedback, motion systems, whatever you can imagine. My point here is technique, and knowledge should always come first. A fast driver with entry-level equipment will always, always beat a slow driver with the best equipment you can imagine. So if you're just dipping your toes and want to try it out, don't worry about getting fancy equipment just yet, especially if you struggle to afford it. Get a Logitech G920 wheel and pedals and start practicing, studying, and doing races. Then, as you progress and start understanding the physics of it, you can think about upgrading. And if you do, I strongly recommend that you upgrade to load cell pedals first. Then you upgrade your steering wheel. Upgrading your pedals will be much cheaper and your performance will be impacted a lot more compared to upgrading your steering wheel. With entry-level equipment, you can already start working on your braking points, your turning points, your fishing technique, your trail braking, your setup changes, your racing lines, and of course, your racecraft, your battling skills, and so on. If you're transitioning from a controller to a steering wheel, it's possible that you don't improve right away. That's normal. You have to restudy some techniques and you have to adapt your muscle memory. I mean, create a new muscle memory for your new inputs. As soon as you get used to it though, you will be faster than you could ever imagine is possible with a controller. This is a channel about racing technique. Subscribe and thank me later. Sim racing is growing more and more and it's bringing real life racers and sim racers together. This is making the competition level rise like I've never seen it before. So if you want to become that competitive, the secret is in the driving technique more than equipment. My professional driving technique course, the Motor Racing Checklist, already has over 3,000 drivers, including real life drivers and professional eSport drivers, just so you know how good it is. I made this course after coaching over 2,000 drivers in one-to-one -one live sessions and it contains all the advanced concepts, techniques and exercises that I've developed with my students over all these years of coaching. It's perfect for any simulator, racing games and also for real life drivers wanting to use the simulator to improve their real life driving technique. This course is about car handling skills and the goal is to make you find better lap times and consistency. You will learn how to prevent and induce specific behaviors and learn how to feel them earlier so you can predict what's happening with the car with professional precision. By the way, this course has a money back guarantee with no questions asked. So if you don't improve, you get your money back and you can join my Discord to read reviews and ask any questions. Join the course now and I will see you on track.